Hi, welcome back to a guide on the Game Dev Engineers Super Duper Study Sheet. And we are now working on, oh, that's not good. The wrong screen there, my bad. So here we are, DFS and BFS traversal. So that's depth first search, breadth first search. And the algorithms are really similar. So I wrote them down in this really simple way in order for you to see the relationship between the two. Uh, the process is like this. You have some sort of data structure Okay, so in this case, that's the stack. You start by adding the root to the stack. And then while that stack is not empty, pop and discover the first element and then push all undiscovered neighbors of that first element onto the data structure. And that's it. That is something you're gonna need to memorize. And you could probably figure out with your head whether or not you need a stack for DFS or a queue for BFS. Basically, the thought process behind that is for a stack, you're going to put something on, it's going to be the first thing off. So you put it on, it's off. You put it on, it's off. You're never going to get to the other stuff. Um, you're kind of drilling down into that one thing, and that's kind of why it's depth for search. You're going to be repeatedly hitting the same node all the way until the bottom. Whereas with the queue, uh, you put it on, and then that's going to be the last guy. So you're going to have to handle everybody else, and so it's going to be a while before you get to him, and that's why you know the, it, it, the algorithm goes wide when the other one goes deep. Um, and now something that they might ask is that you can act, so you can see on the left here, this is, what are we, you know, this is this is just a, um, a while loop here. But you could also do it recursively. Um, and if you do it recursively, you don't need a stack at all. Basically, if it's recursively, you could just use the system stack, like the, the physical, you know, you have heat memory, you have the stack, you could just use the system stack to do DFS. So, so that, that sometimes comes up as well. Um, okay, so with binary tree traversal, it's actually even simpler. You don't need to worry about this idea of um, discovering elements because a binary tree is acyclic. So any, you, you know, they're, they're all going in one direction. They're all going down and there's no two directional, uh, and there's nothing like that happening, right? And so what that means is when you pop and discover the first element, um, all of its children are going to be undiscovered by, by nature of a tree, right? So you pop something, it's got a left and a right. You haven't seen those before, guaranteed, because it's the first time that you're, you're reaching that node. So by virtue of that, you don't have to worry about discoverability at all, whereas you would with a grid or some other graph structure. Um, so the other thing I mentioned here is that when you're doing uh, this process of recursing on the left or the right child, you have the option of when you want to print and so if you print before the left or between the left and the right or after the right, this is going to determine whether the output is pre, in, or post order, which is something I've, heard, I've been asked before. Then there's this one interview question where they ask for a level order traversal. I have not seen this a lot, but it's kind of like a weird algorithm I thought would be nice to just drop in here for reference. And in order to do that, the first thing you need to do is determine the height. Oh, so sorry, a level order traversal just means you go through the first root, then you do all of the children of the root, then you do all of the children of those children, right? All the grandchildren of the root uh, versus a traditional method of like in order or post, post order traversal. Okay, so the first thing you would do is determine the height. So that's just a recursive call um, on the left and right nodes where you're basically going to say the height is the max of what either of those recursive calls found. So if the left comes back, it's got 10 depth. The right comes back, it's got 20 depth your height is gonna be 20. And then you're gonna have the method that is print level order, which is just going to call a helper method called print given level for levels zero all the way to height. And then that helper method print given level is going to have the root and then um, the it's going to have an integer which represents the level. And so basically you're gonna say, okay, is it not null? And then if it's one, you just print the roots data. And if it's greater than one, you're going to print it's a recursive call again with this helper method on the left and the right. However, this time you can just ask for one level less. So basically what this method is doing is it's going down, down, down until it finds the actual level you specified and then it's printing that node. So the level that it's looking for is being decremented each time this recursive call happens until it gets to the destination level. Okay, and finally, I wanted to mention Dijkstra here. All right, Windows 10. Oh my God, Windows 10, what a, what a wonderful 
process. Okay, so Dijkstra here, this is a pathfinding algorithm. That's a little bit different, right? It's, it's not search uh, per, per se. Um, and so what you're going to be doing, it's particularly useful for um, when you have a movement cost across your edges. And so that process is actually um, pretty simple. And the way that that goes is you're going to label each node with its distance from the start node. Then if the node is connected to the start, you're going to replace that distance with the edge weight in order to get there. So I think it would be better to have a visual. So this video is actually really good if you want to learn. Oh. This guy talks about it. So basically, the way that you... Okay, so I, I, there's a lot of things I don't like about this video. But suffice it to say that you take um, the edge length. So here it's 2, 4, 1, 7, 3, 2, 1, 5. And what you're going to do is... Well, let's just do it. So first thing you're going to do is label each node with its distance from the start node. So all those distances are going to be infinity except for the ones that are directly connected. So let's see, where is he going to write that? So here you see infinity, infinity, infinity. But since these two are directly connected to the start node, they're going to be 2 and 4 respectively. So this is the 2 and the 4. Now the process after that is while there remains unvisited nodes, visit the one of least distance L and see if it can relax its neighbors. So this is one of those relaxation algorithms where you are replacing the set distance with the distance in order to get to an adjacent node plus the edge to get to the destination node. So what that means is this four, so, so you take the least one. So for example, if we have zero and two, two is gonna be the one with the least amount of distance right now. So you, you look at it and it, you grab its neighbors and you say, hey, can we relax the neighbors? So this neighbor, node three, which should be a letter because now we have too many numbers, but um, node three here, was originally set with a distance of four. However, if we just go to this node first, which is a distance of two, and then we take the connecting path, and this connecting path is of value one, then that's gonna sum to a total cost of three, which is less than four. And so we relax this node's distance, um, or, or the cost distance basically, and we change the four to a three, which is what he's just done, he's crossed it off. And so then the next thing you would do is you'd say, okay, well, what about this other neighbor? Uh, node four, it currently has a distance of infinity. So yes, we're going to want to replace that. And in order to replace it, we're going to take, what did it take to get to this node? Okay, two. Plus what's it going to take to get to the destination node? Seven. Okay, and that's going to sum to nine. And so then he's going to replace the infinity with nine. So that's the process. That's Dijkstra, in case you needed a super quick refresher. And if you need a longer refresher, this video is half an hour, so you could go watch it. So that wraps up DFS, BFS, and a little bit of Dijkstra. Next, we'll be talking about binary and hexadecimal numbers.